Hello, we're already at our, our third Lenten talk on, on prayer. Uh, so each one of these weeks I'm um, describing a method of praying and I will, uh, then we'll, we'll have time to actually do it. That's, that's the philosophy, not just learn about it, but to actually do it. Um, so the first time, we kind of had some, I had some general observations about prayer and uh, we talked about both spontaneous conversational prayer, um, talking with God, and uh, rote prayers that we may have, have learned along the way. Uh, talked about the rosary, and we prayed a couple decades of the rosary. That first time, last week we did the uh, examine, the consciousness examine. Talked about St. Ignatius Loyola, you know, he thought that was the most important prayer, to pray every day, reviewing your day, hour by hour, pausing to ask God to reveal to you where there were sacred moments to treasure and savor, and also where there was sin for you to learn from, so to not fall into that the next day, um, with the goal of really just being more, more deliberate about recognizing where God is and where God is not um, in, the, in the ways of sin. Of course, God is everywhere. So that's, that brings us to tonight. So tonight, and I think next week too, we're going to talk about praying with the Bible, praying with Scripture. And there's two two ways that come to mind right away. Um, the one tonight and then the one next week. But uh, we'll go back to St. Ignatius Loyola next week. I thought we'd look at St. Benedict tonight. Um, maybe just one one little tip. You probably noticed that I'm in the same spot every night for, for these. This is the third night. This is where I like to pray when I'm home. So um, I think you can pray wherever. You can pray when you're in the shower. You can pray when you're driving. Uh, I do think, um, and people, other people advise, that if you really want to be deliberate with your prayer life and grow as a person of prayer, you kind of need that set aside time. And I think what I'm trying to do in this series is give you some tools to use that. You know, if I'm going to have 20 minutes to pray, what am I going to do? You know, um, And it can be nice to have a dedicated place. And it doesn't have to be a, a place with all these, these nice little icons in the background and stuff, but uh, a place that becomes where you, you go home to, where it's a, it has a sacred feeling to. So anyway, that's just a tip, a possibility for if you could ever carve out some sacred space for yourself. And maybe it's maybe it's an outdoor place and it'd be seasonal. You go there in the summer. But, so, tonight's prayer, it's got a fancy Latin name, so don't let that intimidate you, please, but uh, and called Lexio Divina. Lexio means reading and Divina means divine. So it's like the divine reading. So I mentioned St. Benedict. It gets associated with him. He's kind of the founder of modern monasticism. So I used to, hopefully once COVID's over, I can go back, uh, but it made a lot of retreats at St. John's Abbey at uh, Collegeville, Minnesota by St. John's University there. And uh, so those Benedictine monks, they gather every morning for group prayer, every noon for group prayer, every day for Eucharist, every time for evening prayer, and then often for night prayer. Um, other monks gather throughout, uh, even more often for common prayer. But also built into each of their day is time to, for Lexio Divina, is time to spend with the Word of God. And uh, so you'll, you'll hear this presented variously from, from different people. Um, I'm going to present it the way I learned it when I, I was in seminary. Um, and I'll say I, I use it a lot with groups, um, very fruitfully with our parish staff. Um, Part of my, usually we do the upcoming Sunday's gospel reading as our, as our reading, as our passage, our text. And, uh, well, it's a little selfish because I, I draw on the insights of others to, for my preaching on Sunday very often, you know. I try to give them credit, you know, when I, when I do that, but I don't think anyone's really looking for, for credit, but I feel like sometimes I'm stealing their ideas. But I think that's the idea. That's the beauty of it. You'll see as, as it goes on why that could be helpful. But the way I'm presenting it tonight is more for, I'll maybe mention how I would do it with the group, but I'll, this is more geared toward you and the Word. Um, the, the difficulty with, with tonight is that 
uh, I don't have a text, I don't have a fancy way just to throw a text up on the screen for you to look at a Bible passage. So I thought the Bible passage we would use, if you want to look it up, it's Matthew 6, 9 through 13, I think. Um, I just looked it up. It's not like I have a great memory. But, um, it's the Lord's Prayer. You know, so the Jesus' disciples say, Lord, John's disciples taught them how to pray. How You teach us to pray, would you please? And so he says, when you pray, pray this. Um, so we know that prayer. So you might not need to have that those words right in front of you. However, if you want to pause this video right now and, and grab a Bible or even write out the Lord's Prayer so you can see those words, that might be that might be beneficial. Okay? So here's the here's the method. So there's uh, the reading, the meditation, and usually that's where with a group that's where I'll stop. And often when I'm alone, that's where I'll stop. But it, but uh, they have there's two more steps. There's the reading, the meditation, then the um, responding to your meditation, the speaking to God, and then a, a period of just being quiet with God, contemplation, being open to anything God might have to say to you. And so the reading, meditation, speaking, and, and listening. But in Latin, that sounds really cool, right? Or maybe it's Italian, I don't know. But it's the Lexio, that's where the name of the prayer comes, the reading, the Lexio, the Meditatio, meditation, the Oratio, orating or speaking, and the uh, Contemplatio, the contemplation. So, so those four steps. So this is a way, you know, it's, it's good just to kind of read the Bible and maybe I'll say a little bit about the Bible. So I don't know if you have a Bible or, or not, but um, so this is five, six dollars, you know, the New American Bible. It's a translation that we use um, for mass in Catholic churches. You know, there's, there's a lot of different versions of the Bible out there, but the, the New American uh, Bible is the one we use for church. But there's, there's other ones that are, you know, fine. Um, but I, I think what's great, if you're just really going to sit down and read the Bible, is... So look, for example, at, at Matthew 6 here. Um, this is like Jesus' words and stuff. All this, these are just footnotes, just explaining stuff. So um, if you ever really want to get into Bible reading, I'd definitely get a Bible that has, has a good amount of notes. And I think the New American's really good. New Revised Standard is really good with that. And, um, you know, but, uh, uh, I'm going to say about that. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Sometimes when people want to read the Bible, they, um, they just want to start at the beginning and go to, you know, start at Genesis and keep reading until they get to the book of Revelation. I bet you a lot of you have done that. I don't want to put it down. It's not the method I would recommend. Um, I think Genesis and Exodus are stories we all should know. And maybe starting with those two books is, is a pretty decent idea. Then it gets a little dry with the law books and Leviticus and the histories. But um, I think I'd maybe start with Genesis, Exodus, and then get, then go right over the New Testament, go right into the, the, the gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, and the Acts of the Apostles. You'd see how they would draw on some of the back, um, some of the uh, Old Testament background. Um, and if you get that far, then, you know, let loose. Maybe one of Paul's letters. And then maybe, you know, head back to the uh, to the uh, Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, the First Testament. Um, anyway, that's just, a, that's just a thought for me. So, 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 so here's the reading. The reading part, you read it three times. Um, with your head, it's kind of like you read a newspaper article. Like, what does this mean? What is this trying to say? Then you kind of let go of those intellectual questions. And you try to hear the word or read the word with your heart. And heart is probably more than just feeling. But I usually just, I go, what does this feel like? What is Jesus' mood in this? What, how are the disciples feeling? Or We have one coming up this Sunday. Jesus upsets all the tables in the temple. I mean, that's a full of emotion, right? You could really feel a lot with that. And sometimes, you know, honestly, sometimes we can't, some of the text, the words are a little hard to understand in our head, but we give it a shot. But maybe we can we can feel them, and that sometimes unlocks you know some really good meaning for us. And then uh, I think what's really the most 
probably exciting part of this prayer form is the third reading. So this is still the first step. This is all in the reading or the lexial. So you, you read it just to get familiar with that. In a group, then we maybe pause to ask questions about it, um, what we think it means or how it talks to us or questions we have, what doesn't make sense. And then the heart reading, uh, how's this feeling? You can share that with others or just, you know, kind of be attentive to that yourself. And then the third time you read it, you, you read it with a stance of faith that God is going to draw you to something in those words. God, the Holy Spirit, is going to attract, have a word or phrase in this passage attract you, to, to draw you. So if we were reading the Beatitudes, for example, you know, you might read it over and you just might land, a, it is something about peacemakers or something about clean of heart. Just sort of tugs at you a little bit. You just kind of see yourself drifting toward that. And uh, sometimes it might be something that's very pleasant. Uh, sometimes it might be something that God wants you to challenge you a little bit uh, on. Um, I think most people find that usually they're drawn to something and they can identify a word or phrase. It's possible you read it. It's like, what was Father Tom talking about? These are just words. I don't feel drawn to any, any word or phrase. Let well, us try it again. Try to kind of scan the text real carefully. And um, it's not like it jumps off the page, but I think sometimes that there is a real strong attraction. Um, and then if, if, if nothing really does, just kind of maybe just look it over a third time and say, well, I guess I'll go with this. I guess I'll go with uh, poor in spirit. And then once you have located that word or phrase, then you move on to the meditation. And you, you meditate on that word or phrase and you just kind of speak it over to yourself. It's like, you know, Poor in spirit, poor in spirit. Now, what does that mean? Am I poor in spirit? Uh, is it good to be poor in spirit? Spirit's a good thing. So you might have some questions like that as you're just kind of thinking about it. Maybe uh, a neighbor or a friend or a family member comes to mind. Who, you, who you, Even if you're not really clear on what poor in spirit means, they come to mind as someone's poor in spirit. And what do you... How do you feel toward them? What do you think about them? Why, why are they coming toward you in, in this meditation? Um, or if it was peacemakers, you know, if it's like, do I have opportunities to be a peacemaker? Uh, what's hard about peacemaking for me? How do I need God's help to be a peacemaker? Um, you know, that is a big need in our world, right? So you kind of think about that. Um, no, but it, it, it just you just kind of just go off the word. And it can it can be it can be you know far afield maybe. And you think, well, I'm not doing it right because I'm thinking about this or I'm thinking about that. As long as it's kind of rooted in that word, um, it's good. It's good meditation. So I mean, if you just start thinking about taking the garbage out before because the tomorrow's garbage day, that's probably not worded in the. It's a distraction which we all have. You'll have those. Then you go back to the word to kind of refocus, reground your meditation, right? That's a, that's a good value of the word. So I spent a few minutes with that. We'll do that tonight, and I'll probably use my, my singing bowl like I had last week to, uh, to begin and end the meditation. And then um, the instruction would be, so that, it's kind of nice if you're in a group after the meditation just to kind of share, well, what, what was the fruit of your meditation? What were you focused on? And that's, that's where I really gain from other people's uh, experience. And um, and then the the oration or the speaking to God, um, just given everything that you've said, it's just like, well, I'm going to speak to God. It's like, uh, God, you know, I I really want to be your humble servant. It might arouse some desire like that. Or I really want to be a peacemaker. There's so little peace in my family right now. There's so little peace in our our society right now. Uh, show me how to be a peacemaker. That sounds like something really important. And so you're kind of saying that or, you know, you know, whatever. It could be asking for help. It could be thanking God. Like, wow, God, that was a, I so enjoyed that meditation. Thank you for leading me to that word, you know. Uh, but, you know, whatever, you know, it could be a praise, a thanking, an asking. Um, but it's, it's your turn to respond to, to what happened in the prayer. And then uh, the last one is the contemplation, which we'll have a whole night on in probably two, three weeks. Um, just what's that all about, contemplation? But 
you know, briefly for our purpose, it's just kind of resting with God, like you're in the presence of a friend. You've, you've done the work of the prayer. You can get a kind of a pat on the back. Have you ever done these workouts where you kind of work real hard and then you're finally done and you get like a, a minute or two to just cool down? You know, this is the cool down period. And um, you would just um, enjoy being with God. I don't have to do anything now. Um, if you want to speak, Lord, I'll try to have my heart and my mind open. If you want to give me an image or a, a thought or a desire, uh, I'll, I'll try to receive that as your humble servant. Okay, so that's how it goes. Um, and I will just let's talk through it now. So I don't know if you have the, the words in front of you, the Lord's Prayer. I don't really think you need to because I think we know the Lord's Prayer. And I might rush it along a little bit than I, more than I would just if I was praying alone. But hopefully it'll still be a, a bona fide prayer, not just going through the motions tonight. So let's pray. As always, Lord, um, we want to pray with you here with us and an awareness that you are with us. Um, you're always with us. And we believe that it's pleasing to you when we stop our lives and take time to pray, to engage your word So be with us in our prayer today and guide us. So the first reading, usually in silence, but I'll just read it out since you may not have the words, but you know it. I'll say it and then we'll pause for a minute just for you to kind of think about it. Maybe go over the prayer in your mind line by line and just, you know, ponder what that means. What is our daily bread? You know, what? so here's the, here's the words. Jesus said, this is how you are to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So let's roll that around in your mind and try to come to a little greater mental understanding of those words. Like you're reading a newspaper article. What's, 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 what's this mean? Okay, so if you spent a little time just thinking about, you know, what does it mean, thy kingdom come? Or what is our daily bread? Or what is the evil, the evil that we should be delivered from? Uh, there's a lot of meaning in, the, in that prayer, right? Now, and this can be really a challenge for a lot of people, I find, when I'm teaching this prayer, leading this prayer, is to forget about those questions and the meaning and just try to feel it. And so we're looking for words like, this feels calm, this feels anxious, this feels, you know, comforting, this feels uh, fearful, this, you know, those kind of, you know, feeling words. So I'll read it aloud. Sometimes we, we hear with our heart better than we see with our heart. So you may want to just close your eyes as I read this again. Thy 
just attentive to the tone or the feeling. Jesus said, this is how you are to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's give you a few seconds to absorb that emotionally. We just try to name a feeling. In other ways, how does it make you feel is another way to, when you, when you hear those words, when you read those words, how does it make you feel? How did it feel to the apostles when they first heard that instruction? What was in Jesus' heart? How was he feeling as he was giving that instruction? So we've engaged the word with our heads and our hearts. And now it's time for that, that third reading I was talking about. Um, looking for that word or phrase. And I'm just going to go, we'll go right from that into the meditation without stopping. So, you know, say that prayer over to yourself. Say the Lord's Prayer. If you have the words in front of you, you can read them. And... Um, just see if anything kind of tweaks your heart or your mind and, and draws you. And, you know, as I said, if, if not, then just choose, choose one. And uh, it can be a phrase, it can be a word. Um, and then um, Benedict's image, that I'm told, was that, you know, how cows chew cud. They have like four stomachs or something, and it kind of goes down, and I don't want to be too gross, but then it comes back up, and the, just the digesting, it's got rumination, I think, and um, that, that that's how he compares digesting the Word of God, you know, taking it in, taking that Word and that meditation, and then kind of rolling it around, and it comes back into our mind, and to our heart, and back into our soul, and so uh, really time to, to savor, to savor the Word, and to digest the Word, help it to become part of us. So the third reading, I'll, we'll start with the bell, and I'll leave, this is, this is what will take the most time. So I'll, I'll leave a good couple minutes for this, okay? Trying to identify the word or phrase first, and then taking that word or phrase as the grounding for your meditation. It's repeating it to yourself, seeing where it makes you think. And then you can let go of the word or phrase and deal with what you're thinking about, or feeling, or imagining. Uh, and then if you get distracted, into something else and go back to the word or phrase to reground you and then begin again. Okay? All right, so here we go. The, the third reading flowing into the meditation.
How is this word or phrase speaking to you? How is it an instruction for you? So how was that for you? Were you able to find a word or phrase that you felt you were drawn toward? It's getting just kind of developing a taste for that, uh, I think, you know. Was it, did it feel like a good prayer for you? So I imagine some of you was like, eh. But others of you were probably like, wow, that was, that was pretty neat. And uh, so you give thanks to God if it was fruitful, if you uh, struggled, and it's like, well, what is he talking about? Um, don't judge yourself on that either. It's just, it's awesome that you're curious and you're willing to sit through this talk and learn a, a way to pray. Um, sometimes it's beginner's luck. You try new ways to pray and it's like, whoa, you know, other times it's like you got to kind of train yourself a little bit. But this isn't, you know, this isn't Tom's prayer. This is, a, it doesn't mean it's right for everybody, but it's a, it's a centuries old way of encountering scripture. So it's uh, time tested and for a lot of people, it's, it's a great way in. So often it'll kind of end there. And if it was really, a, if it was really a, a good meditation for you, you're probably ready to write a, a good homily for the people this weekend. <laughs> because because you've encountered the word prayerfully and it's led you to some some thoughts about it. Um, but so now we take the time. So I hope I didn't pull you out of that feeling of prayer by talking more. But, um, kind of learn as we go. Now it's the time to speak to God. To respond to God. So um, let's do that. I'll, I'm going to do it to myself. If you don't mind, so you can do it to yourself as well. So, let's see. to force it if nothing comes that's fine just could be a word of thanks could be seeking direction could be asking for help Okay, then we get to the last. Uh, I see we're over 30 minutes. We get to the last, uh, the contemplatio. We'll talk more about that in a couple of weeks probably. But this is just a time to, you know, you, you put in a lot of work. You sat through 30 minutes through a YouTube video. <laughs> and, and hopefully you were able to pray as well. And uh, it's pleasing to God. It's, and hopefully you, you feel good about it. And now we just rest in God's presence and be our, our hearts and minds open to anything God might want to tell us. And um, and enjoy just this this time of uh, cooling down. Give you about a minute for that.
So it might have sounded like an intimidating phrase, Lexio Divina, a big Latin phrase. Um, not a real complicated prayer, you know, it's the, it's, and I guess I won't repeat myself, you can just rewind and, as I talk through the steps, but it's a good prayer for yourself to encounter the Word of God. It's a good prayer to do with groups. It's a good prayer in a marriage. I give uh, people preparing for marriage often an article from American Magazine, America Magazine, from about 10 years ago, about praying together as a couple, and, they, and this is how, this is kind of how they suggest do it, a little variation on it, but you know, and, and, and you can simplify it. I think a real simple way, simple way to do it is to kind of read it, discuss it. You can put the, maybe the heart and the head reading at the same time with your spouse or your friend or, um, and, um, and then do the meditation where you kind of wait for a word or phrase and give yourselves a couple minutes to ponder that. And then just um, come out of that meditation and it's like, uh, well, did you land on anything? Did you, what was your word? Deliver us from evil? That was my word, by the way. Um, I was kind of, I was kind of leaning toward. I thought I would. I usually like um, give us our daily bread, and so I thought I would get that. But I did feel drawn toward deliver us from evil. So anyway, it can be a, a great way to experience the Word of God by yourself and with others. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for giving us life and for souls that thirst for you, souls that on a deep, deep level want to pray and need to pray. May anyone needing the fruit of this form of prayer tonight find it. May you lead them to the wellsprings of life through your word and through this Lexio Divina prayer. Amen. Bye, everybody.